Okay, welcome back, uh, everyone. Very great to see you. And um, I'm here going to be chairing uh, the first panel of the day with Richard Rushton, Peter Shmugakov, and Lara Persky. I'm here uh, excited to introduce Richard Rushton, who is a professor in film studies at Lancaster University in the UK. He's the author of The Reality of Film, Cinema After Deleuze, The Politics of Hollywood Cinema, and Deleuze and Laura Montez. In 2023, he will publish Modern European Cinema and Love with Manchester University Press. His presentation for today is called Godard slash Cavell in Praise of Two. Godard, Cavell, Cavell, Godard, one or the other. Um, okay, thanks very much, Ilya, and thanks to Michelle and Don for organising this really wonderful to be here. And um, I'm looking forward to a day of really interesting papers. Um, so I guess I'm excited to say that the book's nearly out. <laughs> It even says publish date May 2023, <laughs> so it's got to come out soon. <laughs> I feel like I've been working on it for a long time. Um, um, so the book has 11 chapters. The 10th chapter is on Goddard, so a lot sort of happens in the book before I get to the Goddard chapter. I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about what goes on in the Goddard chapter. I'm not going to tell you that much about the the book. I'm just going to cut straight to Goddard. Um, I'm hoping people know who Jean-Luc Goddard <laughs> is. Um, anyway, he died recently, as you will all know. Um, the other figures in uh, my paper today are uh, Stanley Cavell. I'm assuming everyone knows who he is. And this seemed to be the easily, most easily accessible image of uh, Cavell on, online. So there you go. Uh, but there's actually a third figure in my talk today, and that's Leo Bersani. Um, again, I hope many of you will know of Bersani's works. And the book, uh, my book on modern European cinema and love, kind of becomes a conversation or discussion or argument between <coughs> Cavell and Bersani uh, over issues of love, uh, key book I'll return to is uh, Bersani's book, Forms of Being, which is co-written with uh, Ulysse Dutrois. Okay, so what's the nature of that argument? Um, it's essentially uh, goes through these two versions of love. So Covellian notion of love based, based on acknowledgement which I essentially characterise as a form of mutual understanding and equality between two people, typically a heterosexual couple, certainly in the comedies of remarriage. Um, also claim that it's a conception that's based on difference, uh, not necessarily an overcoming of difference, but a negotiation of difference between one person and another person. Um, some of these ideas are taken from Alain Badiou, who just defines love, or one definition of love as being uh, to experience the world from the point of view of difference. Um, oh, gosh, and I've got a typo. Well, sorry, um, based on language and communication. So that negotiation of love between the two members of the couple is one that pertains to conversation communication and language. By contrast, uh, the notion I sort of take from Bersani is the notion of connectedness. So if Cavell's acknowledgement and Bersani is connectedness. Now this pertains to a rejection of the traditional romantic couple. Bersani sees such a con uh, conception, that traditional conception of romantic love, as based on possession whereby each member of the couple possesses the other. So the exclusiveness of the romantic couple for Bassani must be rejected in order that a more open version of love emerge. Uh, I guess this would include an imperative to connect, hence I use this term connectedness. It's an imperative for each and every human being to explore their connectedness to other human beings and to the world. 
For Bassani, then, this different conception of love is a matter of encounters rather than possession. And he refers to these connections as correspondences. More or less argues that humans should explore the ways in which they correspond to other people and to the world. And what is a correspondence? Well, it's something that corresponds. <laughs> food is perhaps a good example. Um, we eat foods that we like, and we might then say that such foods correspond to us, and we avoid foods that we don't like. Um, so to this degree, correspondences are based on similarity and resemblance. Similarity and resemblance rather than difference. Um, and uh, I should add that many of these ideas come from Foucault's late philosophy, the, the volumes on the history of sexuality, from what Foucault referred to as new modes of relation. Um, and to that extent, they're also not based on language or communication, but rather on bodily connections, the senses and gestures. So that's a sort of key difference between Bersani and Cavell as well. So that's a broad categorization of the approaches taken in the book. And I see Cavell's and Bersani's approaches as being at odds. Cavell focuses on the romantic couple, on modes of language and communication. Bersani, by contrast, endorses an approach to love that is not based on couples and exclusivity, but is rather more e expansive. Um, okay, so somewhere in the background of all of these arguments is Cavell's notion of remarriage and remarriage comedy, I'm hoping everyone's reasonably familiar with those terms. Uh, a couple who was already married, more or less, has a crisis in their marriage. They separate, more or less. And then the task of the rest of the film in the remarriage comedies is for the couple to find a way to get back together again. From my perspective, this is also a new version of marriage, one that emerges in the early 20th century and is given its, given its most ambitious expression in Hollywood films of the 1930s and 40s. It's a notion of marriage based on mutual understanding and equality, effectively what Cavell calls acknowledgement. That's as much as I will say to now, uh, just that I explore these notions uh, in a range of European filmmakers, one of whom is Jean-Luc Godard. Now, a key film for articulating some of these differences between Cavell's and Bersani's conceptions is Godard's 1963 film, Contempt. Um, I won't go into great detail about this film. I'm hoping you're all reasonably familiar with it. Um, but I'll go through some of the issues that are key for my own arguments. OK, so Paul Javal, Michelle Vicoli, is married to Camille. Um, partway through the film, their marriage enters a crisis. It's generally accepted that Camille develops contempt for Paul. And Camille also embarks on an affair with uh, Jerry Prokosch, the character played by Jack Clance. In the end, Camille leaves Paul so she can pursue her romance with Jerry. And I'm assuming you all know how the film ends. I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it. So some aspects pertaining to marriage and remarriage emerge here. For Cavell, generally speaking, Although he writes very little on this film and what he writes actually doesn't really have anything, well, much to do with remarriage. I think we can claim that the conditions of acknowledgement in this film fall apart. Camille no longer trusts Paul, uh, or perhaps she believes Paul no longer trusts her. Whatever the case, the conditions of mutual recognition, understanding and equality fall to bits for this couple. And Camille pursues a relationship with uh, Prokosch. Um, 
Okay, so it's not a remarriage comedy, uh, though it has elements that relate it to the conditions of marriage and remarriage. So if that's a Cavellian perspective, then what about Bersani? Well, Bersani writing at quite great length uh, with Ulysse Dutrois in Forms of Dean uh, in this book. They come at these uh, issues, uh, they you know, advance a reading of Goddard's contempt that's somewhat count counterintuitive. They argue that contempt, you know, as a feeling or emotion, contempt does not cause Paul and Camille to break up. Rather, they argue that it's contempt which defines the love Paul and Camille have for each other. It's only because they have contempt for each other that they are in love and married. So let's work out how this argument <clears throat> goes. Okay, so the love between Paul and Camille is based on contempt because they each fear the other might betray them. I think this is kind of the heart of what Bersani and Dutrois are trying to get at. For example, Paul knows his wife is very beautiful and Jerry Prokosh certainly makes him aware of this very early in the film and well, she's being played by Brigitte Bardot. So to simplify Bersani and Dutrois' point, it's the fear of betrayal that inspires contempt and it inspires Paul's need to keep and possess Camille. It's actually slightly more complicated than that. It's a matter of Camille's fear that Paul won't mind if she has an affair. She wants Paul to possess her. And he doesn't seem to be possessive enough. Um, and that's where the contempt comes from. Um, this desire to be possessed or a desire for possession. And for Bassani and Dutrois, that is what Goddard's film is about. So all of this then leads Bersani uh, to conclude that traditional romantic love, a, based, a love based on sorry, the exclusiveness of the couple or the married couple is based on contempt. It also means that all claims to equality or mutual acknowledgement are so much smoke and mirrors. Love in its traditional monogamous heterosexual form is nasty, basically. Therefore, for Bassani and Dutrois, if traditional modes of love are so bad, what's the alternative? I guess the best way to describe this is to say that Bassani advocates senses of exploration and expansion. So rather than cutting off uh, avenues of connection, for example, by restricting love to a couple or being restricted to one love partner. Bassani theorizes multiple connections and multiple relationships. This isn't an entirely sort of free love kind of ethos. Rather, it's based on these notions of resemblance, connection, correspondence, similarity. To some degree, it comes down to being an ethos of trying things out. This is one of the arguments he makes in relation to contempt. Um, yes, Camille might be married to Paul, but why would there be a problem if she has an affair with Prokosh? This would be a mode of experimentation and exploration. And indeed, Bersani and Dutrois sort of suggest that uh, Paul himself probably should embark on an affair with uh, Francesca, one of the other female characters in the film. Um, so these notions of exploration and expansion are central to this sort of notion of love that uh, Bassani tries to advance. So this is well away from notions of an exclusive, monogamous, romantic couple, and Bassani and Dutrois move quite a long way away from Cavellian notions of mutual acknowledgement and understanding. In a later essay, Bassani and Dutrois say interesting things about a later Godard film, uh, Passion, 
from 1982. Uh, it's a really uh, important article for Bassani's work called The Will to Know. In this piece, especially in relation to Godard's film, Passion, Bersani and Dutois argue for a notion of coupling, but it's not a notion of coupling that involves exclusive couples. Rather, it's based on series of couplings or pairings. So for a start in this film, a film called Passion, there is also a film within the film. And um, the film within a film is also called Passion. So there we have a doubling or a coupling or a pairing. Uh, the filmmaker of this film within a film is coupled with two women, Hannah and Isabel, played by Isabel Huppert and um, Hannah Sugarla. And there are couplings between work and love and uh, Bersani and Dutrois you know, go through a range of these couplings. What they emphasise is that the couplings here don't stop at a singular coupling, but offer a series of resemblances, correspondences and couplings that expand to more and more couplings. OK, so if that's Bersani and Dutrois, argument, where does Cavell fit here? <laughs> uh, I guess this is where I get to the crux of my argument and I simply try to argue that Bassani is wrong <laughs> and Cavell is right, or at least Cavell is mostly right and Bassani is mostly wrong. Why would I think that? Well, it's more or less something that pertains to some of Cavell's arguments um, in The Avoidance of Love. Again, I'm sort of assuming people here will be familiar with it. Essentially, that love requires commitment, faith and trust, and that these kinds of commitments are ones that carry risks. So the quest for acknowledgement, the quest for love can fail. And... In Bersani's theorizations, I can't really find criteria for success or failure. So I struggle to work out exactly what kind of connection or correspondence happens for Bersani. I think for Cavell, what makes love and remarriage important is that one commits to it and one chooses it, and it's an achievement. It doesn't just happen, as it were. Um, from Bassani's perspective, I think avoiding the risk of commitment and avoiding the risk of giving oneself to another is quite simply an avoidance of love, certainly on Cavell's terms. So I can, can, I can quote from my own book, even though it's not out yet. <laughs> it's easier to flee from love or to keep jumping from one love to another than to commit to the process of being to the kind of conclusion I make after a of reading of Goddard's passion. Um, so this brings in another point, difference. The Cavellian conception necessitates the acceptance of difference, or it necessitates the transforming of oneself in order to meet those notions of mutual understanding with another person. That's what Cavell means by acknowledgement, acknowledging another person, not simply <coughs> corresponding with them or connecting with them, but disagreeing with them, arguing with them, falling out with them, acknowledging their differences from oneself, as well as what might be called correspondences. OK, so um, I've sort of set the scene. What I'd want to go on to, if I had more time, uh, was to continue to show how Goddard explores some of these issues. Um, if Bersani and Dutrois find in some of Goddard's films a different logic of love, a logic that dispenses with traditional romantic love, traditional marriage and coupling and so on, um, then what are the con consequences of this new conception of love? Um, well, I think Goddard certainly explores these issues 
Uh, and in the book, I write at some length on uh, First Name Carmen in Praise of Love and A Married Woman and a few other films. But probably the best example for Cavell's arguments is 1985's Hail Mary. And Cavell himself wrote a short piece on the film. In Hail Mary, which is in part a retelling of the New Testament story of Mary's miraculous conception, uh, again, I'm assuming people, I'm hoping people are familiar with the film, more or less. Well, central to the story is a test of faith. What happens is that Mary is in a relationship with Joseph. They've been in love for two years, but Mary refuses to sleep with Joseph. And then, lo and behold, she falls pregnant. As you can imagine, Joseph is a little taken aback by this. But Mary insists it's a virgin pregnancy and, you know, the medical doctor confirms this. So we have here a very substantial test of faith. But over the course of the film, Joseph finds ways to trust and have faith in Mary and vice versa. To some degree, therefore, Cavell sees the film as a descendant of the comedies of remarriage. The relationship between Mary and Joseph goes through a test of faith, but it's survives that test more or less that's actually pretty much all i'm going to get to today but um, i could read that but i'm not going to i just want to <laughs> i just want to raise these four final points cavell is very critical of goddard in the world viewed um, and i take some of these arguments up in relation to what i call the falsity of social worlds i'm not going to go into that um, ultimately, at the end of the chapter, uh, I argue that Goddard sort of doesn't really know what love is, <laughs> or at least he puts it in a, uh, another uh, dimension, uh, in a dimension that's always away from us. It's always over there. It's always else there. It's never attainable. Uh, the chapter does also deal with Goddard's representations and treatments of women and de declare that mostly I come away from the chapter saying those depictions of women are pretty negative. The other issue is uh, notions of queer sexuality. So Cavell very much concentrates on heterosexual um, couples whereas Bersani is a sort of renowned uh, queer theorist. So his conceptions of love and sexuality perhaps pertain to queer sexualities. Again, I don't take that up in the Goddard chapter, but it's something that comes up in other areas of the book. So I thought it was worth flagging up. I'll leave things there.